Alright, welcome to episode 8 of the Broadway Husbands podcast. I'm Brett. And I'm Steven. And we're the Broadway Husbands. Oh, that's right. Um, so, <laughs> uh, today we are super excited because uh, we have newlyweds on our um, on our episode, Justin Mortaliti and Mark Evans. And um, I love following you guys and first off, loved, absolutely loved your wedding photos. They were gorgeous. Thank you. We just looked through all of them last night. It took a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Hours. Shout out to Raven in the Willow. Yeah. Nice. But before we kind of dig into all of that, tell us a little bit about your, like, your careers and your life on Broadway. Sure, you go first. Go, I was going to say, go ahead, honey, <laughs> darling. <laughs> um, oh, geez. I, should I consolidate? I'll consolidate. Yeah. I, yeah, I grew up in Jersey, and I graduated from school and moved to here for a couple of years, and then quickly made my way to L.A. I was trying to be a pop star, and I'm a singer-songwriter, so I was recording and, and trying to make my way out there for almost 10 years, and ended up kept doing musical theater out there. And eventually that brought me to do, uh, they were opening Rock of Ages in Vegas and I played the role of Drew. And after doing that, I figured, well, I should move back to New York because this is, this is my path. And I came here and started completely over because nobody at that point knew who I was. Um, and after a couple of years, I made my Broadway debut in Escape to Margaritaville, which we started in La Jolla and then moved here. And then after that, I did Off-Broadway Clueless, the musical I played Christian. Um, yeah. And, and, and I met you through Ruby yeah, that was Lewis. Just insane. So that's yeah, how, yeah. Ruby and I did the For the Record shows in right. LA together. So we did uh, Boogie Nights and then the Scorsese show. Which right. was amazing. Um, that was the reboot. Ruby and I did the first one. But oh. they did another one. It was uh, Scorsese, an American crime requiem, which was a couple years ago at the Wallace in Beverly Hills. Right. Um, and I got to play the um, Jordan role, the Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio in that's The Wolf cool. of Wall Street. So that was nice. crazy and insane and fun. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was a great company I met Ruby through and met you through. Yeah, and, and Ander- we shot a film. Yeah, we shot a whole thing. <laughs> and Anderson Davis, I did the South Pacific tour with, who who started that for the record yes. thing. And then I hear that they're they might be getting like a Netflix deal or something. It's very exciting. They always had yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're always their fingers are in a lot of pools That's and cool. they're waiting for what's best for them. But they're so it's so well done and they're so talented. Yeah. They put together such good shows. So whatever they do, it's gonna be excellent. Nice. Well, awesome. And then, uh, and then Mark, tell us how, how you even ended up in the States. It's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, it's, it seems so, it, it, so much has happened. Um, I grew up in Wales. I'm a farmer's son. Left home age 16 to go to a dance college for three years, but left after the first year to go to London to train in musical theater. And I loved it there and then did the national tour of Seven Brides, Seven Brothers and then went into the original West End cast of Spamalot um, and it was at that point I was a swing on Spamalot and I was like I feel like I want a little more responsibility um, so I was either thinking I'm going to go towards more directing, choreographing or playing roles and the next thing I auditioned for was Wicked um, for the West End cast and I did ensemble cover Fiero and I was like great I'll do this and the night that I went on Fiero, that was, it was once in a year that I played the role. And I was like, oh yeah, this is what I want to do. And then from there, I just focused all my attention on like just going in for things, for roles. My first principal role was Troy Bolton in the London production of High School Musical. Um, and then I... <laughs> I just visual of you playing basketball. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, that was not good. <laughs> I was not a star basketball player. Um, and then I did a couple of national tours, Rocky Horror and Oklahoma. And then I did, I went back into Wicked in the West End playing Fierro. Oh, wow. Um, and my last show in London was Ghost the Musical, um, playing the Patrick Swayze role. And then while I was doing that, I was auditioning for the London production of Book of Mormon, which was about to start there, which is seven years ago. Um, and ended up, long story short, coming over here instead to play Elder Price on the national tour. Mm-hmm. Only I only agreed to do six months originally, and then I loved it and stayed for three six-month contracts and applied for my green card while I was doing it, and then moved here. I made my Broadway debut um, two years, three years, two years ago, mm-hmm. to play that goes wrong. Um, and I just did Waitress, and I'm about to do... Mrs. Doubtfire Yay! on Broadway. Yay! It's so exciting. Yeah, we just did the out-of-town tryout in Seattle, and it's it's a special show. It was show. so good. It's good. It's it like, so yeah, well, I laugh hear. and cry. I can't wait. It's great. <laughs> and I've known Rob McClure for, mm. like, years. He's my incredible. God. 
There is, um, I think this is public knowledge. I think he does 31 costume changes. I in saw that show. post. That's crazy. And I worked it out because I have a very small responsibility in the show. So I was like with a calculator on my phone. I was like, just so you know, this five show weekend, you're going to do 250 something costume <laughs> I changes. Saw, I think it was Jen Gambatis who posted this photo of him just like dead on the floor after yeah. a five show weekend. It is miraculous what he is able to do in that show. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, but it's Robin Williams. It's, there's, we pay enough homage to, to him and to the movie, but, but Rob just has this ability to make you fall in love with him from the get-go, mm -hmm. and he is phenomenally talented. Ooh, can't wait to see it. Yeah. Wait, so back to you. Um, where on your path did you two meet? Yeah. Well, I had moved, I moved here, and I, Rock of Ages called me, in Vegas called me again and said, we are going to be closing the show at the Venetian and moving it to the Rio. And we want to bring you back out to close it and reopen it. And so I went back out. And a few months prior to that, I did a reading of a new musical called Oswald, where I was playing Lee Harvey Oswald. And <laughs> the woman playing my wife was Becca Falkenberry. And we hit it off during the reading and had a night out. And um, right before I was leaving, she wrote me a message on Facebook. And she was like, two questions. Are you single? Are you looking? And I said, yes and yes, but I'm about to leave for Vegas. And she's well, my, my best friend, Mark, <laughs> is a very eligible bachelor. He's wonderful. And so eligible. She's like, I, <laughs> I think you two would really hit it off. And um, I was like, well, cool. You know, I'm leaving for Vegas, but we can introduce us on Facebook and we'll chat and we'll see. And that turned into texting, which turned into texting every day, which turned into FaceTiming, which turned into falling in love on a video screen. Hmm. And then he eventually was like, I have to come out there and meet you. And it's so weird to get to know someone and become like best friends and fall in love with someone without having met them in person. Mm -hmm. right. And I booked yeah. a ticket to, I think you were supposed to be away for four months. And I was like, I can't wait this long to see whether this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> um, so after six, seven weeks, I booked a flight to Vegas. Um, and I was like, I haven't even seen your legs. And I booked. Wait a second. Oh. <laughs> um, so the legs worked out. How did out. that work out? Yeah. Yeah. How did that work out? They worked out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and but then, then his appendix burst oh. the day he was leaving. The night before, I was rushed into hospital because in I Vegas? had... No, here. here. Oh, he, oh. Um, and I was like, here we go. There's the ball oh. drop. Mm. I went into surgery at midnight, <gasps> and I was leaving the hospital at 3 a.m., I think. Um, I told this elaborate story about how I had to get on a flight. Um, and they bumped me up the surgery list. Wow. And I was out and on a plane six hours later. I shouldn't have been. They gave me a strong injection of blood thinners and- You had to get up and walk around. And the doctor's note, the, the staff, it was Virgin America, they were brilliant. The airline staff <laughs> were like, excuse me, Mr. Evans, you need to walk around a little. To get, like, and then they give me some water. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Anything to get to Vegas. People were like, you're crazy. What if it's a disaster? I'm like, I'm in Vegas. I'll go to the fine. casino. <laughs> but it wasn't, it was It was amazing. not a disaster. Do you oh. find that um, getting to know each other through text and talking that you were able to just like be open and honest and talk about things that you probably wouldn't have talked about had you met physically? Well, Did dating in help? New York is just the worst. I'm sure most people listening will agree if they've had that experience. But like what you get when when all you have is conversation. Right. And so we just fast got to know each other. You know, it was very quick. And you know, there's no opportunity of when is our first kiss going to be? When are we going to sleep together for the first yeah. time? Any of that stuff that in, in New York is like, oh, is it first, second date, yeah. whatever? No, we just became really, really close friends first. And from then, it was like, okay, great. Well, we were invested in this already. Was that a new thing for both of you to have relationships like that where you really get to know each other before? I mean, I had never experienced that before. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm kind of... In the I mean, sometimes <laughs> an old fashioned kind of person where I, if I really like someone, I want to get to know them. And but in this, it's not just in New York, in the gay community in general, right. with these apps, hookup apps, mm -hmm. it's it becomes so easy and so uh, every day and pedestrian for people to just hook up immediately. Mm -hmm. And it's created a, a lot of intimacy issues that I've seen in friends, you know, mm -hmm. and, and in people. And this was a way without any kind of physical anything. Right we got to know each other through talking and what's this podcast rated oh you can say whatever you want, say what you want. Yeah. it's adults <laughs> it's adults i won't say that but no it come to a point because a lot of my friends were like oh you must have sent a lot of dick pics yeah 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 
And we were like, actually, no, something yeah. about it spe- felt so special and so nice that we we were just really falling for one another. And it, it would taint it to be to make it that way right. v- via FaceTime. So it was really we did not see each other, see each other until we were together. And that was the daunting thing about me showing up, having uh, not been to the bathroom for 48 hours, <laughs> having not showered for 48 hours, iodine stains still on my stomach. Seriously, I couldn't stand up straight. And I'm like, hello. <laughs> I was like, let's go right to CVS and get your prescription. We'll lay down. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big relief. There's Aww, something really special about that, sweet. bonding about that. I right? mean, you know, we just got married in September yeah. and that was very much part of the wedding speeches is this crazy story of how we met. And it's, it's really special. It's so oh my sweet. God, it makes me so happy. So yeah. I, what's interesting about, so, you know, we talk about and people ask about a lot in our relationship is the distance. Mm-hmm. And so for you to meet already in this sort of long distance situation where you're both working, um, how did that affect your decision, A, to get married and moving forward, knowing that the, your career is going to do that? And also, I'm very curious about the distance of your family being in a yeah. completely different country and how that affects your relationship. So how do you negotiate distance as a couple? It's tricky, and I think it's really down to the individual, to, 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 the, to the couple. Um, I, for the first 10 years of my career, I sacrificed a lot for work. Like I would, I've traveled so much of the States, so much more of the States than I have of Europe because I was too scared to go on a vacation to Germany on a weekend because I didn't want to miss an audition mm-hmm. or something. I just put it first. I always prioritized my career. And I, um, once I met Justin, I was like, oh, it's a choice. Like we can choose, we, you know, we just spent two months apart while he was doing Pride and Prejudice in Silicon Valley and I was doing the um, Mrs. Doubtfire for two months. And that was tough, and, but it was, we both knew why we were doing each of those projects. But, it, you know, we want to start a family and we have a house in New Jersey and it's it's simply a case of like, okay, cool, when the opportunity comes up, do we want to deal with the distance and everything that comes along with that? Or do we just say, no, actually, we're going to turn this job down and stay but it just depends where you're at in your life, where you're at in relationship, and where you're at in your careers. But it does become really difficult. Thank, I mean, thank the Lord for FaceTime and Skype and that stuff. At least it feels like you're in the same room, right. even though it's kind of lonely and quiet once you hang up. <laughs> well, in the in the beginning, was it um, how how did you were you just constantly planning the next time you guys were together, and then just constantly keeping the connection through social or not social media, but through phone and FaceTime. Yeah. Is that how you guys stayed connected? In the beginning, he, he came and we, we met right uh, early December. And then we said in January, I was I had a little bit of a break and I was going to come to New York and see him. So I came for like a week. And then we said February, Valentine's Day, he'll come back out to Vegas and see me. So we kind of we planned it out like that because we knew we couldn't we couldn't take it. And we had Valentine's together. We said, All right, I love yous for the first time. Oh, <laughs> and he said it first. I did. I wrote he, it in a card. He wrote it in a card, it. and I had planned to say it. I was like, I'm going to say it tonight, because I almost said it by accident so many times. I was like, I have to get this out. And he wrote it in the card, and I read it and looked up, and I was like, I love you, too. <laughs> but uh, after that, I moved back to New York. We closed. I closed that uh, end of February, and then came back here. And it was kind of, it was an understood thing. You know, we, we our relationship grew, and we found each other in this way, apart. And because of it, there was something trust was immediately there we saw each other we saw who each other really was and made the decision i'm going to trust you because i see who you are i see your heart and i do trust you so i make the choice to trust you um because we you know we've all been done wrong we've all been in bad relationships that those things scar you and it's tough sometimes so you have to like make that solid choice and we did and moving forward it was you know life was great and then job would come up i went to la to do scorsese for a couple months and then I was in La Jolla for oh, yeah, that was hard. We did and three tour. and a half months apart. That was in an ideal world, two to three weeks yeah. is the maximum you want to That's go without seeing. Yeah. Yeah. That's our goal. But too. it's yeah. not always possible mm-hmm. when you're both booked and blessed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you guys know. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> booked and blessed. Three <laughs> weeks. But yeah, it's a, it's a learning and it's a build up. And and this last one was hard because I was uh, I was doing Pride and Prejudice, and he was in Doubtfire, and we had just gotten married. Right. We got back from our honeymoon, and you were doing double duty with Waitress mm-hmm. and yeah. Doubtfire, Doubtfire rehearsals. rehearsals. Right. So we didn't see each other much after the honeymoon, and then we left for two months. So that was tough. 
And one day, he on his day off, he's like, I can't take it. I'm going to buy a ticket and fly down to see you. So he came for one day. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's worth it. Oh, it's worth it. Yeah. Like a seven hundred dollar flight. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. My husband. Matter. I need it. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> um, I need it. So, I, there's one big thing to, to, that just popped in my brain from when you were just got married. You were back doing Dr. Palmatter. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> when you were back doing Dr. Palmatter and you just got married and you were sharing these beautiful photos and you went on your stories and talked to your audience because some people were. I missed what people were saying to you, but I really am curious what that was and what what your message was at that time. I mean, there was a couple things happening. I was during I was working on uh, the play. I'm the associate director of the play that goes wrong off Broadway and on the national tour. So we were rehearsing the new tour cast during the day, and then I was doing waitress at night the week leading up to the wedding and then after the wedding I was doing Doubtfire during the day and Waitress at night and I was loving it I like I I really thrive on that but now that we live in New Jersey there are very specific train times that where I need to run to to get home and conveniently at the Brooks Atkinson my dressing was one floor up from the stage store so I would just book it out of there and I was getting a few kind of verbally abusive messages about like how it is my duty to stage door and to meet people afterwards and listen I love meeting people who enjoy the show I love meeting people and signing their playbills and that that sort of stuff and so I just wanted to get out there and just say an actor is not contractually obliged to do this I really really enjoy it and I would appreciate if you don't send these messages also people who are commenting hateful stuff on pictures of my husband and I simply don't follow me and then I said a couple of curse words I think um but I can't, I can't even what did they say it was it was some um, we, we, I think actually it was a bot it was like a, a okay. like one of those robots. no it was people from different countries I think people that follow certain hashtags or that f- look for right. gay or husbands or anything like that they'll find these photos of, you know, your first kiss at the, the altar mm-hmm. <laughs> or, uh, you or know, the or your hashtags of like or, marriage or, yeah. yeah and yeah. they'll take the opportunity mm-hmm. to say things. And they were like, you know, where's the wife or ew, or putting right. like the throw up emoji. Yeah. And I was just well, like, this, this oh is like I'm immoral. from Jersey. This so my friends wrong. are like, who are these people? We're going to find <laughs> them. I was like, don't, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll delete it. And yeah. then I, I told him. No, I actually, like, that's what I say. Justin does actually respond to them. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, well, don't say anything. <laughs> okay. Like, babe, don't. Sometimes they got to be shut up. Yeah, I'm definitely a commenter back, but yeah. Steven's like, just, stop. just ignore just, it. I mean, the just thing is, honest, it. honestly, most of the time I do just delete it, but yeah. sometimes I'll be like, this one yeah. deserves a special. Mm-hmm. But very rarely do those <laughs> things like actually affect me. But what it affects, I know that a lot of young people in theater follow Justin and I. Mm-hmm. And I know that we are, to a certain extent, role models, especially for young gay people. And that's what mm-hmm. most of my Instagram is like professional stuff and then stuff about Justin and I so that we can hopefully show that there is a world where gay marriage is fine. It's OK. And it's yeah. wonderful. And yeah. I, I want to be like an example of that. Remember that one young man young man <laughs> what am wow. i remember that, that, remember one, that kid, one young man he was at stage door waitress and i was waiting mm. for you we were going somewhere and he oh, was yeah. like oh, justin and mark he was like i follow you guys i love you guys and yeah. it was this young gay guy and and so it's it the, really what sweet. affects me is the yeah. thought of like other people seeing this and seeing like oh great that's two guys having their first kiss at their wedding and underneath it someone saying that it's immoral and it is wrong and that we should i don't know what else he said but it was offensive yeah well, it's all the more reason to just keep posting and, and it was rare. i mean there was so much love love poured yeah. out for us at our wedding so much and it was these little tiny inserts it yeah. wasn't like a an onslaught of it which was really nice i'm gonna ask you like what everyone asked us when we got married does it feel different how long ago yes. did you get married by the way eight years eight years eight, yes. it'll be nine <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait wait, wait. <laughs> I, also is was the idea of calling each other husband like a weird thing do you know how what? does that feel we, I, I have my honestly on that full disclosure <laughs> yeah I think you had as well. We've been doing it for a while beforehand oh. because, and this is a bit of an issue of ours. When you are on the phone and you say, oh, um, my fiance mm-hmm. and I, they're just like, oh, well, just ask her to come in. And I'm like, oh, no, it's it's a him. I'm sorry. And this is just that. And so I'm like, you know what? Sometimes they'd be like, is she going to come here to sign this? I'd be like, well, no, he, da, 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 da. And they'd be like, no, your fiance. So, I'm so like, she's, yeah. and I'm like, I just. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Why so the, for a while I was like, oh, you know what? It's the same as sometimes I, when I can't be bothered, like telling people 
how I'm British and why I came here, right. apart from when I'm doing a podcast, of course. <laughs> um, and so I'll just go around with American dialect sometimes, talking to strangers. <laughs> and it's the same as like, oh, I don't want to have to explain that I'm getting married to a man and that he's got, and like yes. he's my male fiance. Yes. So we've been calling each other husbands for a while. Oh, nice. I think. So it's just easier. Yeah. 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 Really but easy. yeah, it was really nice to say it formally. And yeah. And I don't think, I felt more different once we got engaged than um, after getting married. I kind of preempted what it was going to feel like to be married because it kind of felt that way anyway. But once we got engaged, it was like, oh, this is suddenly there was like a relaxation. It was like, mm -hmm. <sighs> okay, cool. Yeah. We've made this choice. We've made this commitment to each other. Like, this is it. He's not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. We literally can go places and know <laughs> that we're always coming back right. to each other. We have made this commitment and it just felt so... It was the most safe and secure I had ever felt in my life. I think. Yeah, That's something beautiful. deepened both times for me. Yeah. Engagement and marriage, something just like dropped mm -hmm. further into this state of bliss and love and, and family. Yeah. That's what it feels. Yeah, it's family. And we want to have children. And it's like, oh, we are now a f like legally Mark and Justin Evans Model Lady. And our children will be names model Evans Model Lady. <laughs> and, and it's like, oh, great. We're Yay. a unit. And it feels, it feels great. He's going to have to spell his last name for the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. Welcome. <laughs> Is it challenging for you having family so far away in the UK? I think I, because I left home at 16, um, I was used to being away from them just in London, which geographically it's like a f four hour, four and a half hour drive away. And so... When I first came over to the States, I would fly back every six months, which ended up being more frequently than when I was in London. Hmm. Um, but now it's it's trickier once you commit to contracts here because the American work ethic is so hard. Like you get one week of vacation for every six months and it's, it's, um, it's more difficult to, you know, I don't want to use every vacation allowance that I have to go back to yeah. the same place all mm -hmm. of the time. Um, and my family are good um, at kind of taking it in turns coming over here. Um, but it is difficult. Again, FaceTime is just wonderful. We're going back um, in about 10 days, actually, for okay. a week to see my family in Wales for four days and then friends in, in London. His family is awesome. It feels weird that the last time I saw most of my family was putting them on a bus at this farmhouse in the Catskills, <laughs> upstate New York. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Saying goodbye after our wedding. Bye. But the, uh, were there cultural differences for you guys to get used to being <laughs> yeah. from Jersey Talk versus the differences of your families? Yeah, Mark that's cannot take the volume of my friends and family. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bunch of Jersey Italians and South Philly Italians, and they're loud. We're loud. We, we were in a car we going down to the Jersey Shore one time with um, three of Justin's girlfriends. My and, high school friends. Yeah, and it's like they have this miraculous ability to all talk at the same time with different conversation <laughs> topics, but all hear each other and <laughs> respond to each other. And he just turned to me. I was sitting in like the rear seat um, he was sitting by the window. His chair and he turned slowly. to me and was like, are you all right? I was like, yeah, it's just a lot. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, and then when Justin came over, the first time he met all of my family was at my older brother Ian's wedding. And so he met everyone at the same time cousins aunts uncles everyone i need to tell the story when i fell on my ass yeah do it say it say it it was that day it was at the wedding and uh, we're standing around cocktail hour and their weddings are different their cocktail hour is pretty long and i was standing with his father his sister and his brother-in-law we're talking maybe like two drinks in and his brother-in-law just smacks my ass. And I was so surprised by it that my feet flew out from underneath me. My drink went in the air. I kicked his sister in the shin and I landed on my back in the grass. And they're all like, oh, Ooh. are you okay? And I was like, oh, I'm not drunk. <laughs> I swear I just about this them, But I just was so shocked. But that that's just how friendly they are. They immediately took to me. They were immediately treated me like family. You just come up and smack your ass. Yeah, apparently. they're wonderful. And, and this is, is that a British thing? No, it was no, no it's just a Brother -in -law. It's it's a brother -in -law. He's, a, he's a fun loving goofball guy and right away just I guess saw that I was too and we were chummy you know one cultural thing that is different that Justin still takes time to get used to every time he goes back is saying you're right 
is like a, a, a version of hello, hi, how you doing? What's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at first he was just like, yeah, yeah I'm okay, I'm fine. <laughs> the like, fifth person that asked me, I was like, did somebody do say I look something sick happened? or something? Like, <laughs> what if you're just like, well, actually today I'm feeling. A I little did the first few. I was like, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little jet lagged <laughs> still, but I'm jet lagged. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would do. But we were excited for the wedding because we were like, these, they're all gonna be together. And we're like, this is gonna be a trip. And it was, I mean, nothing crazy happened. Everyone got along really well. There was so much love in the room. That's the wonderful thing. We were looking through the pictures last night and there are hundreds of them. And we would pause on each one. I was like, oh my God, look, there's like Ashley and Mark with like your Aunt Regina and Uncle Jimmy and like my pet, all of these people. Dancing. A, in the Catskills, which is a three and a half hour drive north from New York City. Like mm -hmm. it just, the fact that everyone so makes so much know. colliding. It's magic. Yeah. It's, magic, it's right? wonderful. It's just so much love. Like your face just hurts from smiling, yeah. right? I cried tears of joy the entire day. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. the weirdest thing ever. Me too. Like, What's wrong with me? So you guys have to see if you haven't, if you don't already follow these two guys, go to their Instagram. What are your handles? I'm Mark Evans actor. Just Mort. And uh, check out their wedding photos because they're just really beautiful. Thank you. And we just got a bunch more, so there's more, more to, to come. come. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, be beautiful. I, I uh, wish we could talk. I want to talk more and more and more, but we really have to save time for our yeah. next segment, which we call Spotlight on Love. Aww. <laughs> so, Stephen, we, so we got we got a a message from a follower so we try to offer relationship advice sometimes it's great and sometimes okay. it's an epic fail oh, good god are we gonna have to give some advice right now um so i'm really good so we it's... want your advice to this listener and i think it's a very it's a, it's not what you think it's gonna be it's a very interesting question i'm gonna let steve oh, read shit. It. oh here we go so this is from an anonymous person on instagram hey i came out as bi to my parents to soften the blow of a, having a gay son I'm not bi. And I really want to experiment with more femme things. I want to wear makeup and shave my legs, but my parents will be totally disappointed in me. Should I discuss it with them or just say screw it and do it behind their back? Love y'all. <laughs> it depends. I think I it depends. If, wait, you, have to, <laughs> you have to make sure that you're safe. I don't know the age of this person. I don't know either. But if yeah. you're reliant on your parents, you're living in their house, if you're living in a certain part of the country, if you know that your community is unaccepting, you have to be careful and worry about your safety. And it might be something where you have to keep it private until you're old enough to get out. Or maybe you have a few people you trust and you can really be yourself around, which I would encourage you to seek out and find these people because they are around and you will find them and you will need each other. Um, but if you are in an area that's more accepting and a little more progressive um i'd say great i'd say you should speak to your parents and be honest and open and and hope for the best but maybe expect the worst just in case to take care of your own heart and uh, and everything's gonna be all right i think the difficult thing for there was in, in our wedding actually there was this camaraderie amongst the gay people because i in my wedding speech i said you know growing up and dreaming of getting married wasn't an option for us because we hadn't seen any of that. We hadn't seen that being a possibility until June 26, 2015, when it was legalized in all states that same-sex couples could get married. And it was like, suddenly just thought like, God, why, why do we have to come out? You know, we were celebrating International Coming Out Day. I don't even remember when it was, but a couple of months ago, and I'm like, it's an awful thing that one is expected to do, to say like, hey, everyone, this is me. Ultimately, whoever you are is you. The fact that you feel like you need to declare it to someone else is society's demands mm. on you. I disagree. If you want to tell people that you are gay, bisexual, wherever you fall on the spectrum, take the labels away. It doesn't matter who you are in love with, who, you've, who you are attracted to. Everything is okay as long as you are safe. Um, and I think that, you know, the relationship with parents is very unique and obviously being as open as possible to them is, is going to keep a relationship, um, is, is going, uh, like honesty between people is always going to keep a relationship um, working best. But again, you don't pick your parents, you, like you, they are your parents and you are capable of getting through anything and everything by yourself or with all of your friends and family members, anyone who supports you. 
Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's what me. would you say? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think what both of you said was beautiful. I also think that, you know, if, if shaving your legs and, you know, dressing up, if you want to do it, like, do it. You yeah. know what I mean? And if you feel like you have to hide out to do it for your safety, as you guys mentioned, I think that, you know, until you're in a place where you know that you're safe, you know, you should go for it. Um, I also think that, you know, be true to yourself. Like, um, you know, don't feel like you have to label yourself. You know, it's kind of what Mark was saying, too. It's just like having to identify yourself as bi or gay. Um you know, I think just be true to yourself and um, the rest will work itself out. You know, you'll keep placing yourself in the right places with the right people. Yeah, I mean, I, I always say, like, for I, I don't know your coming out stories. I'm sure it's very different from both points of view. It's always different for everybody. But, like, if you really care about the people in your life and you're, you know, going through something and you are afraid of how they think of you it's, it's and you really want them to stay in your life it be kind of becomes your responsibility to educate them yeah mm -hmm. because they're probably ignorant and what this person has that we didn't have when i was coming out is the internet yeah and access to groups and glad and organizations that help support people who um who are going through whatever even if mm -hmm. they want to identify with a different gender or whatever you have access to that we didn't have that when i we wish kids, we had that stuff right yeah. Yeah. so like educate yourself educate your family you know you don't have to lie about being bi now you can actually go straight to the thing and just say hey yeah. i'm gay and here's what that means here's a book about it or yeah. here's a yeah. website or whatever right yeah. yeah i'd say lying never does any good no. to mm -hmm. yourself to other people it always ends up in pain yeah. and turmoil yeah. and trouble and, but there's a way to creatively suggest, like he says he wants to shave his legs. There's a way to maybe go to your, if you have a mother or a stepmother, mother figure, go to them and say, you know, I really, will you show me how to shave my legs? I really hate my hair. It bothers me. It irritates me. Like, I kind of just don't want to have it. And see how they take it. Yeah. Hmm. You know? See how that goes. Be creative yeah, about yeah, your yeah. ways of, of saying things. And you might be yeah. surprised. Yeah. Well, I think that's some interesting advice. Um, it's an interesting question yeah, for sure. Definitely. If you want relationship and dating advice for our completely unqualified selves, DM us on Instagram at Broadway Husbands or shoot us an email at broadwayhusbands.com and we just might choose your question on the next episode. Hey. Also, to guarantee you receive our advice, consider becoming a patron on Patreon and you can join us on a, on a live podcast podcast to ask your question check out this plus an array of other benefits of patreon.com at patreon.com slash broadway husbands for more details we want to thank our guests mark and justin i'm thank just so glad we got to connect with you guys because yeah. i love following you on instagram and you really you said you hope to be an example for people i think you are an example thank for you. people Appreciate thank you it. you're an example to us it's yeah. beautiful to watch your relationship and we're so uh, lucky to uh, have you here today. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Thank you so for coming. Here. This is awesome. Thanks for listening, too. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. All right. Um, and on this podcast, we encourage you to love who you love and love what you do. Bye. <laughs>